Masayang morning, virtual learners! We welcome you to a day full of learning and discoveries. I am Ma'am Roxanne Bautista, your resident science teacher. In your previous science lesson, you have learned about the reproductive system, nervous system, DNA replication, protein synthesis, and evidences of evolution. I'm so proud of you because this week is halfway mark of the third grading period. For our objective in today's lesson, you, the students, shall be able to explain the occurrence of evolution. Did you know that Earth is populated with a wide variety of living organisms? Through a long period of time, many forms of life have died out, leaving only their fossils which prove that they existed some time ago. A lot of scientific studies support that many organisms develop from a single ancestor to acquisition of genetic changes and variations over a long period of time. And that is what we call evolution. Evolution is the gradual development of species over time. Evolution is what makes life possible. It allows us, living organisms, to adapt in the environment as it changes. Evolution is responsible for the enormous diversity and complexity of life on Earth. In today's discussion, we will give emphasis on the theories on evolution. John Baptist de Lamarck and his contribution to evolution. John Baptist de Lamarck was born on August 1, 1744, at Bazentin Le Petit Picardy, France. He died on December 18, 1829. He is a French naturalist and biologists who took a great conceptual step in contribution to the theory of evolution. During his time, he was considered as an influential figure in the field of evolution for he was the first to try to explain how new species evolved. He is best known for his idea that acquired characteristics are inheritable. This idea is known as Lamarckism. He also believed that living things evolve in a continuously upward direction from dead matter and from simple to more complex forms. He also claimed that species didn't die out in extinctions, but instead, they changed into other forms of species. As he goes along with his studies, using fossil records as a guide, Lamarck was able to develop three theories. One is the theory of need, which states that organisms change in response to their environment. Here, in order to survive, organisms develop characteristics necessary for them to adopt in a given environment. Second is the theory of use and disuse. According to this theory, organisms' behavior are transformed in response to the environmental changes. This changed behavior will eventually result in the alterations of their morphology or physical structures. Moreover, Lamarck stated that organs not in use will disappear while organs in use will develop. He also believed that giraffes develop their elongated necks and front legs by generations in order to reach tall trees for food. They kept stretching their necks up to the leaves until their neck became longer and able to reach taller trees. These acquired characteristics were believed to be passed on to their offspring and continue to the next generation of giraffes. This is his last theory named the theory of acquired characteristics. However, if you do lifting weights and your muscles become bigger, will you pass the Will you pass this acquired trait onto your offspring?
Of course, no, right? Through passage of time, Lamarck's theories and ideas were unheeded by many scientists, more, more especially with the advent of modern knowledge in genetics and evolution. Now let us proceed to Charles Darwin and his journey in studying evolution. Charles Darwin is an English naturalist who made great contributions to the science of evolution. He proposed the popular theory of evolution based on natural selection. Fifty years after Lamarck's proposal for his theories, in 1859, Charles Darwin suggested the theory of natural selection as he published his book on the origin of species by means of natural selection. After his voyage to the Galapag Galapagos Island in a ship named HMS Beagle. In Galapagos Island, he observed that Finch species have different big shapes and sizes for different food types. Darwin's theory of evolution through natural selection is summarized into, the, into ideas that First, organisms produce more offspring that can actually survive. Here it explains that the number of offspring is usually greater than the available resources necessary for them to live. Second, organisms compete for limited resources. As a result of limited resources available in the environment, organisms tend to fight for food, territory, and other necessities of life. Third, Variation is present among species. Traits vary among individuals of the same species. Variation refers to differences in traits of organisms in a population. And lastly, natural selection constantly occurs. Organisms with traits that are well suited to the environment survive reproduce, and pass these traits to the next generation of offspring. According to Charles Darwin, the survival of the species depends on the conditions of the environment. The theory of natural selection suggested that in consideration with the condition of the environment, only the fittest organisms would survive. Take note, in organisms, Fitness refers to the ability of an organism to survive and produce offspring. Meanwhile, adaptation refers to the ability of organisms to adjust and thrive in a given environment and is also considered in organisms to survive in an environment. An organism that is adopted and has structures fitted in a given environment would likely to survive. Charles Darwin also suggested that artificial selection also takes place in nature, specifically in selective breeding, wherein there's identification and selection of the best and desirable traits to propagate in plants or animals. In doing so, numbers of organisms with desirable traits increases in the next generation. Now, let us proceed to the comparison of ideas of Lamarck and Darwin. John Baptiste de Lamarck and Charles Darwin proposed that species evolved gradually over many generations. Both believed that species do change. Also, both observed a wide diversity of life forms that are adapted to the environment. And lastly, both dealt with passing of traits from parents to offspring of the next generation. When it comes to differences, to Lamarck, the environment and its changes produced needs which resulted in the organisms directing its own adaptation. While for Darwin, random variation was already present and the activity of the environment produced adaptation. To Lamarck, 
the origin of life came from the permanent spontaneous generation meaning meaning to say living things evolve in a continuously upward direction from dead matter to simple to more complex forms while for darwin it is derived from an ancestral form also Lamarck claimed that species didn't die out in extinctions, while Darwin claimed that extinctions really happened. And lastly, Lamarck believed that the mechanism of evolution is through internal drive towards complexity, which is modified by the inheritance of acquired characteristics. These changes directed to meet the organism's need, while according to Darwin, Natural selection and variation exist regardless of organisms' needs and directed towards any purpose which drives evolution. Okay, to summarize our lesson for today, let's have a short activity. Please type L if the idea belongs to Lamarck, type D if it belongs to Darwin, and type LD if the idea belongs to both of them. Okay, let's start. For number one, organisms directing its own adaptation due to needs produced by the, cha by the changes in the environment. If you answered L, then you are correct. It is one of the theories proposed by Lamarck. According to him, in order to survive, organisms develop characteristics necessary for them to adopt in a given environment. For number two, a species evolved gradually over many generations. If your answer is LD, then give yourself a thumbs up because you are absolutely right. The idea that species evolved gradually over many generations was proposed by both Lamarck and Darwin. Job well done. For number three, random variation was already present and the activity of the environment produced adaptation. If you answer D, then you are also correct. This idea was proposed by Charles Darwin. For number four, observe a wide diversity of life forms that are adapted to their environment. If your answer is LD, you are amazing because you are correct. This idea was proposed by both Lamarck and Darwin. And last, number five, the giraffes with acquired stretch necks pass on their traits to their offspring. If your answer is L, then job well done, because you are correct. This idea was based on the theory of acquired characteristics by Lamarck. Job well done, students! At this point, we will now move to our question and answer portion. You will be given 30 seconds to type your questions in the comment section of our FB live stream. Then our teacher moderator will help us gather your questions. And the timer starts now.
Okay, time's up. For the first question, it came from a learner of Paula National High School. And the question is, have humans stopped evolving or are we still evolving? Remember, humans have never stopped evolving and continue to do so today. As long as human reproduction involves randomness and genetic mutations, there will continue to be differences from one generation to the next. Meaning to say, the process of evolution can never be truly stopped. Now let's proceed to question number two. The next question came from a learner of Malinta National High School. And the question is, why do some species survive while others go extinct? Extinction is often caused by a change in environmental conditions. Remember that when conditions change, some species possess adaptations that allow them to survive and reproduce while others do not. If the environment changes slowly, species will sometimes evolve the necessary adaptations over many generations. Meanwhile, if the condition change more quickly, then species can evolve, and if members of that species lack of the traits they need to survive in the new environment, the likely result will be extinction. That ends up our week 6 lesson. I hope that you have a meaningful learning in participating in today's discussion. Thank you and see you next week as we welcome you again to another day of learning and discoveries. Padayon, great students!